how big this thing is. The site is so remote, the terrain so tricky, it's only accessible by helicopter. As we fly over this narrow part of the Fraser River, the waterfall created by the rock slide is unmistakable. As you can see, there's the big rapid in the center. That's been From the air, fisheries manager Dale Mickey shows us the newly formed rapid. He says that section of the cliff is what tumbled into what used to be a calm waterway. All the rock on the top of that face has fallen into the river, which is confining passage for fish. I've never seen anything to this degree on this size of a river. The churning water is pushing back against the salmon struggling below. So typically if salmon have some room to kind of swim down, they can jump deeper. But if it's shallow, it really restricts their ability to do that so they can't get the strength to jump over those rapids. Some have made it through, as seen in this video, but the turbulent water makes it impossible to tell how many. Debris pools are now forming below. Those sticks are actually 25-meter logs. The peak of the run will be mid-August when up to 180,000 sockeye per day will try to migrate through this channel. Several strategies are in the works to clear the bottleneck, but first the site has to be stabilized. Rock scalers are blasting off precarious chunks of boulders, some the size of buses. This is the biggest project of this nature that we've worked on, for sure. These technical crews dangling from the cliff have spent weeks making the site safe for teams that'll be working below. We hope to be rolling the rocks down at the river level to create the, the fish passageway. They're hoping the calmer waters of that man-made fish channel and maybe a fish ladder on top will help the salmon. Another option would be to fly them by helicopter in buckets to be released upstream. But there's concern those options won't be enough to handle the three and a half million salmon that are coming. I think it's, it's very critical. It's Gord Sarrett is working with nearly two dozen First Nations that could be directly affected, many of them also getting a first-hand look, some calling for a state of emergency. There's First Nations up above the slide that have already started to shut down their fisheries and um, ensure that every fish makes it back to the spawning grounds. And there's no time to waste because right now the fish can't go forward and they won't be going back. Tanya Fletcher, CBC News, along the Fraser River in B.C.